Hi there, my name is Brian Harrison. I am a cloud solution architect with Microsoft and what I want to talk about today is governance. I've already done one video around governance and did a quick 101 around resource groups, tags, and how to organize your resources. In this one I want to start talking about security which is probably the primary uh, category with respect to governance. Now there's two major areas to think about security uh, with respect to Azure. One is uh, role-based access control or uh, permissions. The other is policies. The first one defines what users are allowed to do and what they are not allowed to do with respect to uh, resources, resource types, uh, resource categories, and things like that. Whereas policies actually limit what all users can do within the scope of a resource group or a subscription for example not allowing to deploy into a particular region things like that with role-based access control though what you are doing is you are taking the users and groups that are part of the active directory the azure active directory tenant that is applied to your subscription and then giving those users and or groups access and permissions to different types of resources. Now those permissions can be applied at the individual resource level, at the resource group level, or even at the subscription level. And let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So first of all, uh, if you look here inside of my portal and I hover over my user, you will see that there is a directory there called Brian Fanfare Solutions and that is my Azure Active Directory domain. It's brianfanfaresolutions.onmicrosoft.com. Now, if you're an enterprise customer, you're probably going to want to synchronize your local Active Directory with Azure Active Directory to create your users and groups. However, if you are just an individual developer such as myself or a small company, then maybe you will be happy using the Azure Active Directory domain that is created for you when your subscription is created. You can then create new users and groups inside of that particular Azure Active Directory. To show you exactly what I'm talking about, I'm going to go under all services here and specifically go into my subscription. I will then click on my subscription and you will see that I actually have the ability to uh, modify the access control. Now this particular access control you will find this button in the navigation for every single resource that you go into. Going into here is where you can actually specify permissions but if you want to actually create new users and groups uh, in your existing Azure Active Directory <coughs> then you're going to need to go to the Azure Active Directory uh, resource itself. Now to do that I go under all services and find Azure Active Directory. Now my user can actually be associated with multiple uh, Azure Active Directory domains uh, in order to allow me to interact with other customer subscriptions, uh, things like that. But with this particular subscription, this is a one-to-one -one relationship. I only have one Azure Active Directory domain and I only have one subscription underneath of this particular domain. But primarily, especially with enterprise customers, there is one single Azure Active Directory domain and usually many subscriptions. Uh, you can see here I have access to users and groups. I also have access to devices, applications, uh, custom domain names, things like that. Now I'm not going to be going into all of that here. Uh, that we will save for a separate 101. But with respect to role-based access control, the only people that permissions and roles can be applied to are users that are actually part of the Azure Active Directory domain. I make this clear because subscriptions can also have Microsoft account users applied to them. People who have email addresses with Outlook.com, Live.com, uh, things like that. Those users can be allowed access into the into the subscription but they cannot be given roles and permissions using role-based access control. 
Now let me go back here to the starting point and I'm just going to choose this storage account here again for demonstration purposes. And click on the access control area. As I mentioned, this is available to you at every single resource, meaning that you can actually give roles and permissions to an individual user at the individual resource level. Most of my customers that I have worked with, though, have been applying these roles and permissions at the subscription level, thereby saying, well, my network admins only have access to the networking resources inside of this subscription things like that. <clears throat> but let me show you exactly what we're going to do here. So you'll notice here that I have two particular uh, roles with users that have been applied. There is my individual user, which shows as owner, which means, of course, I can do everything with this particular resource. Uh, and then there is a contributor, which is a application user, not a standard user. It's all, you can also think of it as a service principle. Uh, the contributor role has a certain set of permissions that are actually a little less than the owner role. But let's say I wanted to add a new user. I click on add. I then select the role that the user is going to be a part of. Let's say it's just the reader role. And then I'm going to actually add a specific user. Now, I can assign access to a user group or an application and then of course I can search by name or email address when adding this. Now I only have my one individual user inside of my domain but if I had additional ones uh, you'll get maybe three to five here that you would be able to easily select from or you would have to do a quick search. This user then gets applied to the role and the permissions are associated accordingly moving forward as they log into and work within the Azure portal. Now, out of the box, there are a large number of roles. Uh, if you can see here, there are quite a few. Now, this listing is not 100% complete. There are actually additional ones uh, that are available, but they're tied to whether or not you are using specific services. If you're not using those services, then the roles actually don't show up. You also notice that there are almost always a contributor and a reader for each type of service uh, where there are roles applied. Uh, contrib there's a, a storage blob data reader, a storage blob data contributor, obviously one of them only being able to view, one of them actually being able to add, create, update, and delete. But as you can see here, there are roles for most of the services, thereby allowing you to really designate who has access to what types of services within the scope of your subscription. Now you might be looking at this list going, well, Brian, you know, this is great, but what happens when these roles aren't uh, conducive to my security uh, design? Well, then that's where you have the ability to create your own roles. Uh, there are what are called custom roles. I'll provide the link to the documentation uh, for how to create custom roles uh, in the description of this particular video. Custom roles, however, can only be created uh, at the command line level, either via PowerShell or via the Azure CLI. Uh, you can then, inside of those custom roles, apply individual permissions that make the most sense for your security design. Now let me show you real quickly what I'm referring to by individual permissions. If we go down here to the virtual machine contributor, I can click on this and then you can see first of all that there are no users assigned to it but you'll see I have a permissions button right here. I can click on that and this is going to give me a listing of every single permission based on the resource type. And if you look at this list here, for example, you'll see Microsoft.network. And you might be thinking, well, why would a user need to have access to the Microsoft.network resource provider when working with virtual machines? Actually, the answer is very simple. It's because <coughs> and I'll scroll right down to the permissions here, virtual machines sometimes need to, be, uh, need to be applied to a load balancer. So putting them into the backend address pool of a load balancer, for example. Or, most importantly, every single virtual machine uh, should also have the ability to be applied to a subnet. 
and you can see here under virtual network subnet that there is a permission that has been uh, turned on for that and that's because every virtual machine needs to exist in a subnet therefore the user who creates the virtual machine needs to have that permission to be able to successfully place that virtual machine in the subnet but as you can see here just by going into the microsoft.network there are a lot of permissions that are possible and then you have three standard permissions based on each action a read write and delete and then in some cases there are other actions and you can obviously um, check to find out what those other actions are so when creating a custom role you're going to need to understand what permissions and actions a user will be doing with respect to the different resource providers these are considered resource providers here for the resources that they're going to be working with within the scope of your Azure subscription or your resource group or so on. <clears throat> Unfortunately, as of right now, there is no user interface to be able to you know, select and choose uh, how you would do this. It has to be done via the Azure CLI or PowerShell. And as I said, I'll provide the documentation for this. Hopefully this gives you an idea of uh, how role-based access control is uh, accomplished and provided inside of Azure and hopefully it will help you start your conversations around how to design your security uh, within the scope of Azure and how you want to apply these roles and permissions to users and groups as they start to work with resources in Azure. I do highly recommend though if you are going to be building custom roles do solid testing before actually applying it to the users and groups that you're creating the custom roles for uh, because you could find very quickly that a user gets locked out from being able to do something that you want them to do if you haven't tested those custom roles appropriately. Uh, so with that, I hope that you've gotten everything that you need to at least start the conversation around role-based access control and hopefully I'll see you in a future video.